1953. It was a long time ago. It was the year of the coronation. Coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Back then, most people didn't have television, but a lot of people bought their first television then so that they could watch the coronation. We didn't have a television, in fact, we, we didn't have a television until oh, 10 years later. And of all our neighbours in the village of Rowd in Wiltshire, I only can remember one neighbour who did have the television, and that was Mr and Mrs Roby, right next door to us. And after they got their television, and after the coronation, I started to get invited in to watch children's television. These were the days of Bill and Ben, the flower pot men. Good, wholesome entertainment for small children. <laughs> But I enjoyed it, um, and in the years kind of following that, I was in their house more and more watching these good children's television programmes. And of course television was only on in the, in the evening, sort of tea time in the evening, there was no daytime television then. Um, and after a few years, in 1956, when I was six years old, my mum was starting to visit my dad who was in hospital. He was very poorly and he was in hospital. Uh, so I was getting to see television with my neighbours more and more. Uh, and when my dad uh, ended up in hospital in Bath, which uh, from the village of Roud, near Devizes in Wiltshire, was a long way away. My mum had to get, what was it, a couple of miles into Devizes, get a bus from Devizes to Trowbridge, a bus from Trowbridge to Bath, and have a bit of time with my dad. It meant every time she visited him, she was away all day. So, I had the freedom of the house. Back then, houses weren't locked or anything, they were just left open, so I was able to go in and out of the house uh, at will, play around outside, but neighbours kept an eye out on me. They were responsible people back then. And I was well looked after, I was fed and watered and allowed to watch television. So, I can clearly remember when I was six years old, 1956, I watched Bill and Ben and Mrs. Roby must have forgotten about me or something, because it then went on to greater things and more adult things. It went on to a war film. And I can clearly remember this war film with tanks and jeeps and soldiers and airplanes, but best of all, men jumped out of the airplanes. These were paratroopers. They jumped out of the airplane and they floated gently down to earth. And when they reached the ground, they seemed to just touch the ground delicately with their boots, roll over to one side, unclip their parachutes and run off, guns blazing. What I didn't realise, of course, was when they landed on the ground, in reality, they'd probably just jump off of a stepladder or something like that. But anyway, to me, these guys had jumped out of airplanes miles high in the sky and landed gently. And I thought this was wonderful. I went to bed that night and I dreamt of parachutes and paratroopers. <laughs> and I was going to be a paratrooper when I grew up. But better than that, I thought perhaps I could make my own parachute. So, the opportunity arose, my mum was away all day, I had the house to myself. What I needed was a tablecloth, <laughs> a ball of string and a pair of scissors and I would be able to make my own parachute. As simple as that. You tie the string to the four corners of the tablecloth, tie them together, 
you have a parachute. Next, you see I realised I didn't actually have a proper harnessed parachute on the back. I thought, how does this work now? I was using my imagination. I thought, I wear a belt, so let's just ah, tie it onto my belt and a nice strong knot. There we go, that'll do nicely. And I thought, next I need an aeroplane. Now, I didn't have an aeroplane, but I knew I needed height, elevation. I needed to get up there somehow. So I thought, if I go upstairs, and our bathroom was at the top of the stairs, I went into our bathroom, which had a small window, and I climbed out of the window onto a flat roof which is part of the houses. Anybody in Roud who knows Tower View will know the houses are still like that. They all have a, a flat roof extension. And I climbed out onto the flat roof and I prepared myself. For some reason I didn't go to the rear of the flat roof. I went to the front where everyone, all the neighbours could see me, but nobody seemed to be around for or, or, or perhaps I just waited until no one was around before I carried out this operation and I went to the edge of the roof with my parachute and I looked down now to me I was a million miles up in the sky in reality I was probably I don't know 12 14 feet but to a six-year-old boy that is some height and I stood on the edge of the roof absolutely terrified but I knew that as soon as I jumped, my parachute would open and I would float gently to the ground. So off I went. I had my parachute in my hand like that and I jumped. Now, what I had to do was wait until the wind started opening out the parachute and then I would let go and it would billow above me. But of course what happened was I hit the ground with an almighty whack still clutching my parachute. I hadn't even let go of it. And I landed on the path in front of the house, not just the path though. It was the edge of the path, the edge with a flower border. And my dear dad had planted, when he was well, he had planted some flowers there and made it look really nice with some bricks set in on edge. And I came down and my backside and the bottom of my spine hit the bricks with an almighty force. And the pain was agonising, absolutely agonising. I've never known anything like it in all my life. In fact, my eyes are watering just now, thinking about it. I couldn't get up, I couldn't do anything. I'm lying on the ground there, still clutching my parachute. And then I realised the next problem was going to be my mum could be coming home any time. I had no idea then, children at that age, having any concept of time. She could, she could appear at any time. I had to get indoors, get out of the way. I couldn't even stand up. I crawled on my hands and knees, dragging my parachute behind me, managed to get door open into the house. I crawled upstairs on my hands and knees, still dragging my parachute. I climbed into my bed and I lay down with my parachute hanging over the edge of the bed and I cried and I cried and I cried. And I lay there for ages and then I realised I had to do something. I had to dismantle my parachute, take the string off, put the ball of string back in the cupboard, put the scissors away, put the tablecloth back, which was slightly crumpled and stained by then, get everything tidied away, and I went back to bed. And I lay there and just cried. I never told my mother. No neighbours saw what happened. Or if they did, nobody said anything, and my mother never knew about it. 
until something like half a century later, when she was an old lady and I was a middle-aged man. And I came clean then, I thought it was reasonably safe to come clean then. She was absolutely horrified by the story and what I'd done. But anyway, there's no point in telling me off then. By then I was about 56 years old. So, there we are. I suppose the question is, I copied something I saw on television. Do kids today copy what they see on television and in media? I copied, was it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it was bad because I almost killed myself. But it was good from the point of view that I used my imagination, I was creative, I made something. So yeah, so it was a, a good thing, it was a good thing. And here we are, today, all these years later, with a homemade parachute. So, well, we'll see how it goes this time. <laughs>